market value measures. With market value measures, there is information that we need to obtain that is not readily available on the financial statements. To calculate these measures, we need the stock price. Therefore, these measures are for only publicly traded companies. For our example, we will just assume that there are 40,000 outstanding shares and the market price of the company's stock is $90. Earnings per share, also known as EPS. This measures exactly what it says. How much income does the company generate per share? The EPS is calculated as net income divided by outstanding shares. For our example, we do $363,000 divided by $40,000, giving us an earnings per share of $9.08. So this company earns $9.08 for every share of outstanding stock. Now we can use the earnings per share to calculate the P.E. ratio, which is the price earnings ratio. The P.E. ratio is defined as price per share divided by earnings per share. Our price for our stock is $90 and our earnings per share is $9.08. Therefore, our P.E. ratio is 9.91 times. What this ratio implies is that the market is willing to pay $9.91 for each dollar of current earnings. A high P.E. ratio means that the market expects the firm to experience a lot of growth where a lower P.E. ratio indicates that the market doesn't have a lot of faith in the growth of the company. Analysts must be careful when drawing conclusions from the P.E. ratio. If a company experienced income close to zero, then its P.E. ratio would be very large. However, the market price of the stock would probably start to fall, therefore ultimately lowering the P.E. ratio. The market to book ratio. The market to book ratio measures how many times over investors are willing to pay for a stock relative to the stock's book value. The book value is simple, the company's equity divided by the number of outstanding shares, so the market to book value is calculated as market value per share divided by book value per share. In our case, our book value per share is 2.353 million divided by 40,000 shares which comes out to $58.86. And our market value is $90 per share. So we do $90 divided by 58.86 cents, giving us a market to book ratio of 1.53. A market to book ratio of less than one implies that the company has not been performing well and investors do not have a lot of faith in the growth of the company. Usually value investors look for low market to book ratios, but this does not always mean that the company's stock is actually at a good value. Market capitalization. The market capitalization is equal to the stock's market value multiplied by the number of outstanding shares. This is an important figure for any possible buyer of all the outstanding shares in merger or acquisition cases because it tells them the minimum amount of money they would need to come up with in order to buy out the company. The formula is price per share times shares outstanding, which is $90 times 40,000 shares. Enterprise value. The enterprise value is very similar to the market capitalization except it tells a prospective buyer of the company how much money they would have to come up with to buy out the company and pay off all of its outstanding debt. The enterprise value is calculated as market capitalization plus market value of interest bearing debt minus cash. The enterprise value multiple. Analysts use valuation multiples in order to estimate the value of a company's total business. To measure this, the enterprise value is divided by the earnings before interest and tax depreciation and amortization because it allows that comparison of firms with different capital structures. It is calculated as enterprise value divided by earnings before interest and tax depreciation and amortization. We would expect a firm with a high multiple to experience growth in the future. 
where we might not have much faith in the growth of a company if they have a low multiple. Finally, we'll go over some things just to consider. There are many problems with analyzing financial statements. There's no underlying theory that gives us guidance in creating benchmarks and making judgment about value and risk. Because of this, we really can't say which ratios are the most important. Also, many firms are conglomerates and have their hands in many different types of businesses. Because of this, it's difficult to really find a comparable company. They're all different and therefore, they all operate differently. Another problem that rises is the fact that many companies are spread out all over the world. There are different regulations, different laws, different accounting principles across borders, which makes these companies difficult to compare with each other. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to visit our website at subjectmoney.com for more information, and also be sure to check out our other videos. If you're interested in Excel tutorials, we have a website called excelfornoobs.com, and we upload video tutorials regularly.